Yeah, but your students were so preoccupied with whether or not they could use linklets, they didn't stop to think if they should. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another video where we stay at home and learn something about programming that maybe you didn't learn in class. Today I want to talk a bit more about data structures, which I've talked about before, specifically linked lists. I have some videos on those, links in the description. Today I want to talk about when you might not want to use them. As always, the code examples in this video are available through Patreon. More about that in the description and a big thanks to all of you that support the channel. But today my goal is really to get you thinking about your data structures. Computing students usually discover linked lists in the first or second year of their programs, but it's really common for me to come across juniors and seniors that are still unsure of when to use what data structure. Now for today's video, I'm going to assume that you all know what linked lists are and that you've written one or two. If not, links to other videos in the description. But a linked list gives you a couple really nice things. The first is it's flexible. It gives you the ability to link together chunks of memory. They can be anywhere. Some could be on the heap, some could be on the stack. It doesn't matter. You can just link them all up. It doesn't matter if they're next to each other. That's really nice. The second is you can easily link up different kinds of data. The third is the amount of memory that you're using for your linked list scales linearly with the amount of data that you actually put in the linked list. So I don't have to pre-allocate a bunch of memory. I just add nodes. And as I add nodes, the amount of memory that I'm using expands. And I have the flexibility that I can add things in the middle. I can add things at the end, add things at the beginning, and there's no copying or shifting things around. I just change the link. So that's really nice. And that flexibility also means that if we do things right, inserting and deleting things from our list should be very fast. So that all sounds great. What's not to like? The thing is, is that that flexibility comes at a cost. If I compare a linked list with an array, the first problem is that the linked list will use more memory. I'll show you an example of this in a minute, but it's pretty intuitive. The main idea is that in an array, you just have elements lined up in memory next to each other. With a linked list, you have these next pointers. So for each element, you have a pointer that points to the next element in the list. So that means that for each of your elements, you have an extra four bytes if it's a 32-bit machine, or eight bytes if it's a 64-bit machine. And if your nodes are really large, maybe that overhead isn't a big deal. If your nodes are really small, like a list of integers, that might really add up and be significant. And of course, this is even worse if you have a doubly linked list because now you have two pointers per node, so you can do the math, the overhead doubles. The second problem is that when you're using a linked list, your program is probably going to have worse memory locality. Locality, now in this case, we're talking about spatial locality, means that you tend to use memory locations that are located very close to each other in memory. With an array, this tends to be the case because in an array, all of your elements are laid out in memory one after the other. With a linked list, this may not be the case because you can have nodes anywhere. They can be in different places on the heap and you just have links that are connecting them. So the memory you're accessing as you go through a linked list might be scattered all over memory. So dad, why does that matter? Well, I'm glad you asked. To understand this, we need to look at the memory hierarchy, this thing. You see, a computer has a lot of different memories in it. The biggest store is usually the hard drive or SSD, this big mass storage layer down here at the bottom. It's big and it's relatively cheap, but it's also slow. The next layer up is your main memory or your RAM. It's faster, still pretty big, but not as big as the disk. And above that, we have the cache, which is faster yet, more expensive. And this is gonna vary some between machines, some have two layers of cache, some have three, but you're never gonna have a lot of cache. And then after cache, you have your registers. Now you just have a few of those and accessing a register is super fast. Also, as I mentioned in my last video, when your program asks for memory from the operating system, it comes in pages, usually about four kilobytes. So these are chunks of memory in which you can put your variables. And another thing to keep in mind is that sometimes if you have a lot of programs that are trying to run all at once, they're all requesting memory, sometimes there's not enough to go around and the operating system has to take some of your pages of memory and write them out to disk. So with all that in mind, let's say we have some memory that we wanna access. How long is it going to take? Well, that really depends on where it is. If it's in a register, it's gonna be really fast, no problem, it's gonna happen very, very quickly. If it's been paged out to disk, well, things are gonna take much longer because we're gonna to have to bring that page into memory, we'll have to load it into cache. Like there's, there's a multi-step process to get it to us, it's much farther away. This is going to be much slower. And that is where memory locality comes into play because computers move memory around in fixed size chunks. We talked about pages, but also in cache, memory is moved around in cache lines. Whole lines are brought in. So if I access one byte somewhere in my program, well, a whole line of memory, this could be 32 bytes, 64 bytes, or 128 bytes comes in with it. This all gets brought in together. And so if the next thing that I'm requesting 
is close to the last thing I'm requesting, well, it's already in cache. So this is all really fast if I have good memory locality, if my accesses are all in the same local space. Now in main memory, you get the same thing. Now remember, main memory is organized in pages, usually four kilobytes each. And each time I try to access a page, if that page has been paged out to disk, then I have to wait for it to come back in. Also, as I mentioned, now that is called a page fault, just in case you were wondering. I Okay, well, anyway, page faults are really slow. You want to avoid them at all cost, and better memory locality means that when I access memory, a page comes in, well, it's more likely that the next things I'm going to access are on the same page, and so I'm unlikely to page fault again for a while. This is true when I'm working with arrays, they keep everything nice and close together. But with linked lists, I, you know, I could have a node on one page, I could have a node on another. All of my nodes could each be on separate pages. So in a linked list, my program could page fault a lot. But does any of this really matter for you? Will this matter in real programs? Well, let's try to find out. To try to answer this question, I came up with a simple example. I wanna take you through it really quick. It's definitely not going to show us everything, but it will give us a rough idea of what we're looking at. Okay, so I started out with a simple linked list in C, this is basically a slightly modified version of the one from my linked list video. Nodes are defined by this struct here. Each node has an integer and a next pointer. And then we have a bunch of different operations that we can do on the list. And those are defined here in this .c file. The first here just prints out the list. It starts at the head and runs through to the tail. And I don't actually use this one in my test, but it's here just in case I copied it over from the previous one. Next, we have a function that creates a new node. It allocates space for the node on the heap, and then it sets the value of the integer I specified, and then it returns the pointer. So then two functions here that we have for adding nodes into the list. The first adds a node to the front of the list. The second adds a node after a specific node in the list. Then we have a find function. This is just going to look through the list for a specific integer. So just like print list, it starts at the head, and then it goes one by one until it finds the value I'm looking for. And if it finds it, then it returns a pointer to that node. Okay, remove value is just like find node, except that it deletes the node from the list when it finds it. So it first checks to see if we're deleting the head. We're going to handle that as a special case. Otherwise, it's just going to go through the list until it finds the value that we want to delete. Now, if we find it, we unlink it from the list and we free the node. And I'm sorry, I know I'm moving through this pretty quickly, mostly because the point of this video isn't to teach you how to implement linked lists. I did that in other videos, and I hope you'll look at those if this is confusing. So moving on to main.c. Now, what I've tried to do here is to implement the same operations, but some are using an array and some are using a linked list. And the idea is that if this use linked list variable or macro is defined, then we'll use the linked list functions, and otherwise we're going to use the array functions. And that way we can do roughly the same thing, and hopefully have some kind of fair comparison. And we include our linked list header file and define a bunch of different constants. Now, because I'm going to be deleting elements from my array, I'm reserving one integer value, which I'm just setting to int min to represent an empty slot in the array. So basically an available slot. I'm also using negative one to represent a return value when a value can't be found. Instead of allocating one big array because I want to look at memory usage, I'm going to start off with an array of 100 elements. And then anytime that I run out of space, I'm going to increment the size of my array by 1,000. For the values that I insert into my list and array, I'm using 500,000 as the upper limit. And I have a loop down below that adds and deletes. And I'm going to go through that loop 2,000 times. And each time I'm going to insert 100 random numbers and try to remove 50 random numbers. I say try because I'm just gonna pick random numbers and then call delete on those numbers. If they're in the list, it'll remove them, otherwise it won't. Then at the end, I'm going to traverse the entire list one time because I wanna see if that is faster or slower. Then I declared the head for my linked list and following that is the pointer that's going to point to my array and its initial size. Then add number LL, this just that's add number linked list that just creates a node and then adds that node to the head of the list. This find value function simply goes through the array until it either finds the value we're looking for or doesn't and returns not found. Now let's add some numbers to the array. For this, I have two different methods. And this one is a little tricky because there is no way to do exactly what we're doing with the linked list. All right, with a linked list, I just stick something on the front, I adjust some links and I'm done. So here I tried two different approaches. The first one doesn't bother with memory efficiency at all. 
Basically, it wants to add numbers quickly, so it always adds values to the end of the array. As values get deleted, it just leaves those slots empty. So that's going to waste some memory, definitely, but it's going to be fast. Probably similar to what we see performance-wise with the linked list. For the second approach, we're going to first see if we can find an available slot in the array. If we find one, we're going to use it. If not, then we'll add it to the end. Now, this is going to use less memory for sure, but it's going to be slow because it has to hunt through the entire list for an available slot. And so as the list gets longer, we know this is gonna take longer. Now notice that both of these functions check to see if the array needs to grow and then use realloc to make it bigger. Okay, so then let's move on to delete. Delete number LL simply calls our linked list delete function. So not much to see there. The array version goes through the array and if it finds the value we're trying to delete, then it marks the spot as available. Just like the linked list, it only deletes the first instance of that value. So these two are basically doing the same thing. Then finally, this TV two seconds function is simply a convenience function that takes the time val struct that get our usage returns and converts it to a number of seconds, which is going to make it easier for me to print things out. Now down here in main, I am first going to allocate my memory if we're using an array. Then I'm using get our usage and I'm gonna use this a bunch of times to get the memory usage of the program over time and the execution times. I went over this function in my last video, links in the description if you didn't see that one, but please check that one out if you want more information about it or about measuring memory consumption. Okay, now here at the beginning, I'm getting the baseline memory usage and the start time. I'm going to use these as references for measuring the things that my program is doing. I use srand just to make sure that the random numbers will be the same for each version because I'm trying to make sure that I provide some kind of fair comparison. Then I declare a few variables. So insert time and delete time, they're going to keep track of how much time I'm spending inserting values and how much time I'm spending deleting values. This last time variable just keeps track of the last recorded timestamp so that I can compute the insert and delete times. And so now let's just jump into my loop. We insert 100 random numbers into the linked list or the array, whichever we're using. Then we check the time and update the insert time. Then we try to delete 50 random numbers. And then we again check the time and update the delete time. And we're going to do this 2000 times. Okay, once we're done, I'm going to compute the total time used for inserting and deleting nodes. And then we're going to run through our list or array and time that. Then I just go through and print out all the times and memory usage statistics. And that's pretty much it. I have a make file, which is pretty straightforward. You can see my videos on make if you want more on that. But one thing that you may not have seen before is this dash D option. What this does is it defines a preprocessor macro when we compile. So this is like adding pound define use linked list at the top of my program. So here I can tell it to compile it using the linked list. And I can also tell it whether I want to use the array approach that wastes memory or use the more memory efficient approach. So this make file is going to produce three different binaries that use our three different approaches, a linked list, an array that reuses memory and an array where we just waste memory, but keep things fast. And so now let's take a look at how they all work. So we compile them all fine and we are going to run them. And I'm gonna speed this up a bit because they take a while to run. And I don't want you to have to sit here and wait for a minute watching my computer work in silence. So we'll start with the linked list. Once it's done, we notice that it uses about three megabytes of memory. Insertions are very fast as predicted. Deletions are slow because we have to go hunting around for the thing that we wanna delete. The traversal time for one time through the list isn't too bad. It's about 700 microseconds. I guess that's fast. I'm really not sure. I guess we'll find out when we compare it. With the array version that doesn't waste memory, we see as predicted that it's using much less memory. So our variables use about a fourth as much memory as the linked list did. But as we predicted, the insertions are slow. Remember there, we're hunting around for that free spot. That's definitely slowing us down. So that's not really surprising. What might be surprising is the delete time. So it's doing roughly the same thing as the linked list, but it takes half as long. But maybe that doesn't matter because altogether it's still slower. Okay, now finally, let's look at our wasteful array example. This one should use more memory and it should run faster, we think. And it does, but it doesn't actually waste that much memory. At least in this case, it only added about 75K of RAM, which compared to the overhead of the linked list doesn't really seem that bad at all. Insertion time is fast, much faster than the linked list because we didn't have to allocate memory every time. Deletes take about half as much time as the linked list, even though we're doing basically the same thing. And the traversal time for the array options are also about twice as fast. 
So in this case, the last option not only uses far less memory, but it's also much faster than the linked list. And this experiment doesn't tell us precisely why this happened. I'm not currently tracking page faults or cache misses, and we haven't looked at the assembly code that the compiler is producing so that we don't really know. Maybe the compiler just produces much more efficient code for the array than for the linked list. That's actually pretty likely. And I will leave these explorations up to you. I mostly wanted you to be aware of the issues and so that you can take advantage of this when you're writing your own programs. Also, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. These experiments don't show linked lists in a very good light, but I'm not saying you should never use them. I still use them. There are times where they're very convenient, they're very elegant, and there are a lot of times when performance, the actual speed of my program doesn't really matter all that much. When I'm much more concerned about my code, how clean and concise and easy to test my code is, how modular my code is. All of these things matter a lot too, and sometimes they matter more than speed. And so sometimes I'm okay with a program that runs at half the speed and uses more memory if it's easier for me to get it working right faster. But my point for today is that the elegance and flexibility that we get with linked lists comes at a performance cost. All things being equal, an array usually uses less memory and it's usually faster than a linked list. And so now you can account for that when deciding which data structures to use in your own programs. So I hope that's helpful. And until next time, I will see you in my Dad, next- can we talk? Sure, Jane, what's up? These people are tired. They've been social distancing and locked down and coding from home. You can't just sign off with the usual, I'll see you in the next video. These Not people me. support you. They've spent their precious work from home hours to watch your videos. And you owe them more than this. You're right, Jane. I do have one of the most supportive audiences on YouTube. You guys are all great. What, what did you have in mind? Well, it might be better if I show you. Okay, come. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you liked what you saw, make sure to smash that big red subscribe button. And also make sure to ring the notification bell so you don't miss another video. And make sure to like, comment, and share with all your friends. And I'll see you in the next video.